Hello, welcome to the uh, Package Manager's Weekly Sync. I am Picking Brain, your host. Uh, we're going to go around the room and say what we did last week, what we're going to do next, and what we're locked on, uh, and then any other updates. Uh, before we start, can I have a note taker, please? Oh, oh. I can do it. Uh, Jim, go for it. Uh, so we'll go down the list. Uh, Andrew, your first go. Oh, I didn't update my name. It just says name. Sorry. Um, yes, yeah, so the past couple of weeks I've been off with flu. I still have a, a sinus infection, which is hurts here and here. And it's uh, a little bit debilitating, but I can actually hold a thought in my brain for a, a reasonable amount of time now. So like, I can start to catch up again. Um, and yesterday then kind of went back through and looked at a lot of different things that have been talked about, uh, and trying to kind of get back up to speed again. Uh, this, the next thing that I was going to do was, uh, pick up where I kind of left off before going to Lisbon with the, uh, the brainstorm that I made of all the different pieces, uh, and try and turn that into something that was a little bit more useful and had a little bit more context than just a load of tiny little boxes. Uh, maybe starting with like a video talk through of it to myself and then turn that into some chunks of separate pieces. After listening to the call last week, Eric was talking about like some of the different components of package managers um, and how that might be useful to break apart some of the work and I think I have that kind of encoded into this this brainstorm it just doesn't kind of uh, describe itself well because you need a fair amount of context to understand what all the different boxes mean so that's what I was thinking of doing along with trying to squeeze out a blog post about the package managers working group or at least a draft um, also going to be off on Friday and Monday for Easter holidays as their bank holidays in the UK. Um, so it was, it's going to be a bit of a slow week, I think. Uh, other than that, oh, and I did send a couple of PRs to update JS IPFS on NPM on IPFS. And I also noticed the uh, apt on IPFS uh, server, the daemon had fallen over, stopped working, and I hadn't set up any kind of upstart on it. So it just didn't come back and uh, it was still syncing, are syncing every four hours. It just didn't publish anywhere to tell anyone uh, what its uh, IPNS was. So no one could ever resolve any version of that data. Um, but I definitely need to find someone to help make that more than just one server running that thing because it does not handle anything particularly well right now other than the r thinking an initial adding um so I, I don't think the infrastructure team has enough capacity to do that at the moment looking at how responsive they've been to other things at least on github but um it's not like it's incredibly pressing either so uh I think it is, it is a case of it just needs more servers rather than there's something like a, a bug or a performance problem that's that's breaking it. It just doesn't have enough people sharing the data before it actually becomes useful. Um, so we'll put a pin in that until after Easter, I guess. Might be worth chatting to uh, Hector and the cluster team. <laughs> um, Molly's nodding, so I guess yes. Hector? Uh, just, just in terms of... Um, if if infrastructure uh, don't have the bandwidth to help you right now, but Hector has some experience of running multiple nodes that have a ton of data on, um, and it might be something to factor into the experimentation, uh, adding cluster into the pile so that it's even easier to say we are mirroring the same data. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. I will, uh, I will add that to my notes. I was nodding because that was my exact same suggestion, which was like, 
well, it sounds like either we could run this on Pinbot with many, many duplications, or we can try and you know, use it more as a test case of like, how do we do this so that everyone else can, can do it as well, not just people who have their own magical huge clusters. I did, I've tried a number of times to get Pinbot to, uh, to pin <laughs> the thing. It never works because it's humongous. Uh, and it, I guess it's recursively trying to do everything. If you just give it the name, it, it's going to uh, time out before. If there's definitely some kind of reasonable timeout on it rather than it just, it does eventually come back. Usually it's like two days later and like, sorry, I didn't successfully do your thing for you. It's, it's definitely a good candidate for its own cluster rather than pinball. I think there's also there's an open issue on the Go IPFS repo about uh, being able to shard pins. So if you pin a, a DAG, it will pin all the nodes underneath the DAG everywhere. Uh, whereas what they want to be able to do is say, well, I only like started this node, but then only pin like two levels deep. And then this node over here will take this one and pin two levels deep. <laughs> this, this IPFS node over here will take this node, this DAG node and pin two levels deep. Um, but they never, never really landed that pin. Yeah, I think if you're trying, what you're trying to pin is bigger than the space allocated on the cluster uh, for each node. You're in trouble. I, I don't suppose there's a, a, a cheeky way that you can kind of, um, like preload individual cluster machines by, by like SCPing the. Dot IPFS directory or some part of the dot IPFS directory onto a number of without because obviously your peer ID can't be the same on all of the different as clusters. As, yeah. as long as you change the peer ID, everything else is fine. Is all is there like a subdirectory? I, I have no idea, but is there a subdirectory that can just be like plonked or is it copy everything and then run a command that will change the peer ID? Like you can you can um, use a regular IPFS server in an IPFS cluster. So if you just do your IPFS commands on that cluster. The data should be there. So, um, so maybe you need like a cluster you can log into to just do some of these manual commands mm. to sort of preload the data. Um, generally, they're deploying these things with Kubernetes, um, and you're, they're trying to prevent people from logging into them. But um, I'm sure they could custom configure that. I can make some kind of Kubernetes command that says copy some of this data on deployment <laughs> okay cool that's all for me all right so uh last week i was trying to look into npm and ipfs issues uh the first one i looked at was that the like copying like the update registry is this command is really slow um so the registry what it does is it copies down the dag node uh, that is the MFS root, or at least the root of the NPM registry on the mirrors. Uh, which should be super quick, because obviously it's one node, but it isn't because it does way more than it thinks it should, and it tries to start, and it starts loading the whole DAG, which is why it's so ridiculously slow. Um, so I changed it to not do that, and now it's much, much faster. Um, but I was trying to, I was trying to, in a nice way and I'm just so sick of looking at the MFS code it's just squirrely squirrely pull streams everywhere but now that IPLD JS IPLD has landed the async await uh, API can refactor the whole thing to the async await so that's what I've been doing and I'm down to like my last three failing tests uh, and it's so much better so much easier to read you so much easier to understand what is going on um, so I'm going to try and land that uh, in the next day or, or a few days um, and that'll probably be me for the rest of the week any questions cool um, so that's that's it for the updates uh, Ollie, cool. do you want to tell us about one quick little other update um, that I forgot to write down um, Eric Warp Fork is coming over to London. Uh, I think he's literally on a plane right now uh, and will be there for a few days. So I'm going to go up on Thursday and hang out with him. Um, and maybe that'll end up colliding with some table flip people. I'm not sure what part of London he needs to be in. Um, 
but I'll just come up for the day uh, and then brainstorm some things and see how that goes. Yeah, you guys going to come and hang out at jail because that would be super rad. Jail, aka Table Flip HQ, for those yeah, unaware. Sorry. We don't just invite people to prison. <laughs> there is a nice prison in Shepter Mallet if anyone wants to visit. Um, the Cray Twins were kept there for a, for a while. This is an you awkward, can, you can awkward talk. side channel. <laughs> Let's pull up. Um, are you about to goad me into talking about some kind of NPM on IPFS app, Mr. Uh, no, well, I mean, yes, that too, but the Vodaccio uh, kind of yeah. operation you were looking into is kind of quite interesting. Oh, yeah. Uh, I haven't performed the work yet, merely teed it up for someone who might be interested in performing the work um, in as much as um, agent of user commented on the thread where we were looking into NPM on IPFS, the app edition, uh, with a why not examine lower hanging fruit such as integrating with existing uh, NPM transparent proxy software. So something that you could run for a team of developers and have it cache all your modules for you. And Vidaccio seems to be gaining in popularity and is notably used by some hip projects in the JavaScript world. So it was likely, it let certainly like more people are aware of it than I realized. Um, and there is a nice use case whereby, uh, so it supports um, s s plugins for its storage layer. And it seems like we could do a good job of writing an IPFS plugin for it and then stand up a few instances of it, or at least one for us and encourage others to do the same and start to get the, the nice sort of team level effect of if every team starts to have a a cache of the subset of NPM that they use and that they are in a pool of Vodaccio instances sharing that data, you get this kind of, it plays nicely with the sizes of data sets that IPFS is good at right now and starts to demonstrate the benefit. If we can have like two disparate teams sharing their caches and start to pull, pull modules from each other's caches rather than from central registry, that would be a good demonstration. Um, but yeah, I think I spoke to Andrew about it and he was like, I think that would, that work would fit in the purview of the package managers <coughs> team and it would be a good thing for us to look at. So I've kind of left it there. It seemed like something we should, uh, reach out to them and be like, Hey, this might be a good thing, uh, or potentially an easy way to, uh, have like a, lazy amount of cash in that you don't need to keep everything on disk you if you've got old versions that you're not like seeing any active downloads then you could almost like wipe them away and assume that someone else has them on their equivalent thing um and let ipfs take care of all of the the actual like oh well if this isn't isn't here i'll go load it um kind of things uh also like it i would group it as a slightly separate bit of work to NPM on IPFS. Like the tables themselves hopefully have the same CID and so the same work gets done collectively eventually. But trying to try and like poke all of those things together just makes it a lot harder than trying to kind of let them do their own implementation of IPFS support for whatever measure that is. Tim? Um, teams like publishing their cache of uh, like NPMs that they, that they are using, seems like ideal use case for IPNS. So they drop that CID into an IPNS entry and update it constantly. And then they can, sh they can, other teams can su subscribe to that and then they can sync their caches. I'm not sure how much, Ollie, I don't, you've looked into this more than me. Do they allow publishing of your own stuff to it, or is it entirely a proxy? They, it supports private and local modules. So there runs into a potential issue of security and like proof of where did this come from that mm -hmm. get area, the more <laughs> like, <laughs> the more you add, 
these things. My, my assumption was the, the minimal uh, feature would be add IPFS storage in that is careful not to publish always your private modules. Yeah. Not run into or, or, or encrypt them with, uh, you know, your t share, shared key that yeah. you know, then, then it's actually useful for distributing with the, that sort of thing. With the using IPNS to sync various teams for that shows. Again, I wonder whether cluster might be a good solution for that problem. Well, once you got a CID, you can pin it into cluster, so. Mm -hmm. Fair. I think there's something interesting here in addition, like we can kind of face this of like doing doing like research and prototyping and then like also um, trying to talk to more people in the space to see if there's enthusiasm, excitement, that sort of stuff. Um, but I think in addition to a lot of individual machines kind of sharding part of a, a package manager registry that they're using, um, also being able to like have, have a machine that's kind of doing heavy lifting and caching um, is something that like, people might click on the idea that, oh, there is now, of course we have that like server that's like running that we use for our test deployments or demos or whatever, or it's like just one, one of the engineers in particular has a machine. Like I think many workplace setups end up with that sort of model um, where there's like a thing that's not kind of constantly coming on and off and on and off and on and off, which is maybe a little bit tricky from the like peer routing use case. Um, but having a, a single kind of local server that's doing that like caches everything um, that lots of groups pull from. Um, like there should be some configuration option of like, do you want to take like a, a slice of everything or do you want to take like everything that's relevant to your group? Um, so as to like kind of enable those two different use cases with the same sort of IP plus node configuration. Go for it. I, what do you think of doing like us like doing our own sort of tailored subset of just like all the NPMs that are required to build IPFS and like everything we use in our organization and the dependencies for those. So we could, you know, do an offline demo, for example, like we'd be like, you know, unplug the network and then everybody's able to work for a day. Um, it, like it wouldn't be all of NPM, it would just be enough of NPM that, but I think it would still be a fair amount of work to actually, you know, figure out what that subset should be and have enough. And plus it's always constantly updating because. Many small dependencies. Yeah. Um, I think NPM on IPFS probably has at least that in it already. Yeah, I believe you could use, I mean, I have used NPM on IPFS to install everything via IPFS. Like, it already works. It's painfully slow, um, but you, you, can, you can use it. Uh, but could you drop just the subset that's needed on a hard drive and ignore all the other stuff? Um, I guess that's what I'm saying. So you need the index files as well as the um, the packages themselves because mm -hmm. NPM needs to be able to, to kind of query something. And I believe NPM on IPFS basically will store the last time it queried the thing onto its own local MFS for those indexes, right? Alex is nodding-ish. Um, so yeah, you can, once you've installed it once, you can unplug and you can install again. And in theory, you could change it to a version that you already had, like a, a, an older version, and it should be able to, assuming the older version doesn't then declare some dependencies that you don't have in your cache because things like move around quite a lot, um, that you, like, that already works um, without needing any kind of extra configuration. Or not. Um, the, most of these proxies work lazily, so you just, like, plug your request your set of packages through it and then it'll cache it forever. Like you don't need to try and manually keep a list of those things. Um, the, 
and I believe you, it would even work like if I had done it and it, as long as, well, JS IPFS doesn't have the DHT, so you're going to have to plug everyone together on an offline network. Um, mm -hmm. But that's the only thing that's stopping it from being like equivalent to a completed thing, I think. Yeah, I guess my user story would be, you know, a bunch of IPFS developers meet in Vancouver or somewhere. We go off to a cabin in the woods where there's no, no internet. It's like we want to be able to just take one hard drive that has all the dependencies on it and uh, figure it out when we get there, you know. That do is... you mean like all the, all the packages from NPM you want to take or do you want to just take all the needed dependencies? Just the needed dependencies that we need to be productive for uh, a weekend in the woods. Yeah, so I guess like the only thing that you need, the only missing part of that story right now is that how do you get people's laptops to connect to each other whilst not having a DHT? We might have to write some code. <laughs> no, I, I think we could figure that out. So I think, uh, um, cause they could just, they could just swarm connect, right? That yeah. Or just cust custom bootstrap list. Yeah. Um, so I think that the, the thing is like you shop in the woods and then there's like the one dependency you need to build all the packages that no, that you forgot to sync before you left. Yeah. That too. Um, also that was the exact use case that we had in mind for IPFS camp. Turn turn off the turn off the Wi-Fi. <laughs> Wait, no, don't do that. Block access to the bigger the bigger net. Yeah, we deprioritize the P2P over Bluetooth, so the Wi-Fi has to stay on. But like like say we did this Team Verdaccio thing and we had you know people just using it, we'd have those list of packages automatically. Yeah. I was thinking so I, I had the same thought when I was investigating Verdaccio, and then it occurs to me that uh, there's a bit of work to do to integrate with Vedaccio, which is worth us doing or or encouraging Vedaccio to do. Um, but I think there's a component of IPFS on NPM that is the the registry proxy. Uh, Alex, maybe you could answer this, that if we were to run that on a known server, we could just set as our registry proxy for the team. Like, do we have to do the work to integrate with Vedaccio or do we already have all the pieces we need in NPM on IPFS? NPM IPFS would do it, but obviously you don't get the nice GUI that you get with production. I guess you're also then trusting that you're trusting uh, the NPM on IPFS registry. Like you put another party in the middle of it. If you had Vidaccio basically go like, I fetch something from NPM registry as a proxy, and then I stored it both on disk and on IPFS, I only trust my own like I trust what I just did uh, and then if I need to get that back later, like I can delete my table, but I can always get it back from IPFS. Conveniently, uh, the JS, the registry.js.ipfs.io uh, registry has a copy of everything that is hosted on IPFS, so I can always plug it from there. Uh, you could definitely... Like, I just wonder if they if, especially as Vidaccio is aimed at companies saying like, let's wedge another trusted entity in the middle of it is going to be the, like, it, it definitely would, could work that way, like from a technical point of view, but from a social point of view, companies are already like struggling to trust registries as it is and will pay money for like SLAs and things from enterprise, uh, offerings that if you say like well if you trust that the service that we're running it is open source but there's no guarantee that that is running on the like you'd have to do all the work to confirm that yourself again by talking to the registry and comparing to make sure that you got the same cids for all of the things uh but for demoware yes you could do that <laughs> you can also get uh, each um each document has uh, has SHA hashes for all the tables, so you can get those from the main NPM and then 
hash what you've got and then compare. That way you wouldn't need to like transfer the whole tile and just just compare the hashing. And Oli, were you talking? Are you thinking about Vadaccio to the to the end users client, or Vadaccio to the registry, or Vadaccio to Vadaccio? Like, there's a few different. NPM on IPFS could talk to Vidaccio and Vidaccio could be set up to be like, I can, I can be a... Was, so in the simplest case, I was thinking just add an IPFS storage mechanism to Vidaccio and have them connect to each other deliberately. So if a thousand companies spin up an, their own NPM proxy, then each one's subset each one's cat local cache becomes a shared co-hosted communal cache um, and with no not, not like it would be nice to integrate npm and ipfs into it but in the simplest case like just npm talking to a registry proxy and then get that working and then figure out more elaborate integrations i'm glad we're on the same page there in theory then npm on npm on ipfs would be able to go like Oh well, I I've got the CID from the um, the registry document that we ran, but then when I went to get that CID, I got it from a nearby Vidaccio, oblivious to the fact that that happened. Um, so yeah, you're talking about the the bootstrap the the network of package hosters rather than transport every different hop should be IPFS. Okay. Yep. I think we're about to run out of time. Jim, do you want to go quickly? Um, I'll, I'll save my thought for next week. Yeah. No, it'll go stale. <laughs> I will, um, I'll let that Evergreen know. thoughts. Molly? I also had a last minute thought. Uh, I've been, <clears throat> been thinking about how we can um, do two things. One, effectively communicate with all of the package manager humans who are starting to be like, oh, IPFS is working on package managers. Interesting. I wonder what that means. I wonder what an IPFS powered package manager can and should look like. Um, and then two, you know, when, when we start talking to those humans and like bringing them into the community, do a good job of like percolating like, their needs and their asks to all the other working groups. Um, and so a thought for the first one is that I think it'd be really useful if we had like our, our vision or our, our stages of visions for what um, IPFS powered package managers can and should look like kind of written down somewhere where there's like, well, you know, here's, here's like the easiest conception where it's just like, I don't know, just using IPLD as a data model or just, you know, hashing and, and content addressing packages or something like that. Like here's, here's like, basic and then like you know medium mode where you're using it as a transport and does xyz wonderful things and then like extra crazy amazing interplanetary mode and you have like a couple of different varieties um, given that there are many different types of package managers of like what it takes what it would look like if you yeah blew your mind with ipfs in a package manager um because i think like right now when package managers are are trying to wrap their heads around what adding ipfs means they kind of need it uh, elucidated for them they need they need like the visualization of what of what they can look forward to um, to like spark their imagination maybe they come up with something different but it'd be really useful if there was something we could point at that said these sorts of things because otherwise you have to explain them like kind of one off and be like this is why it would be so exciting and what it would do and like here you have all of the same normal like reasonable questions about how the heck would that even work um, you can point people somewhere and then vice versa when people start talking to us it'd be cool if we can invite more people to either those conversations or to watch those conversations or something so that um, we can kind of percolate the, hey, here's what package managers need. And you can like hear it in their own words and like understand um, what they're doing from kind of like a user research perspective. Um, super common to just like, you know, bring people to the user and um, make that connection directly. Um, helps a lot in making the needs and challenges real to people instead of just like, you know, a list of asks on a sheet, which sometimes don't get quite as much uptake as we need them to. I, that's, that's definitely my plan for the next few weeks is to turn my brainstorm into something that's useful to uh, someone who has 
no contact with us to be able to go like, okay, yes, I understand the, the levels and the parts that play into this and then eventually connect that to how people have done it already uh, and can do it in the future. Cool. Uh, Jessica on the user research you one and maybe she'll be able to help out with that as well. That would be cool. Okay, cool. Uh, we are out of time. Um, we'll to the next meeting. We can talk about uh, NPM on IPFS desktop next week. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, thank you very much, everyone. See you on the internet. Bye.